welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and I'm really excited today to bring to you a Grixis control list out of the Pro Tour that recently happened for Guilds of Ravnica, played by Shota Yasuoka, who is, without question, one of the most favored magicians when it comes to control builds. Now, I see here some of you rolling your eyes already because when you hear control, you think slow and you think no fun. But I encourage all of you to give Shota a chance, watch some coverage of his matches. He plays at an amazing pace for a control mage, ridiculously fast, an absolute professional of the game. And his decks and his plays are exciting. He does not play control the way you may always think of control. I remember some very interesting games from a pro tour that I could go on a tangent about where he was like super aggressive with his control deck and it was simply exciting and fun to watch. His play style is amazing and you should definitely check him out. Um, I'll make sure I put his name in the description so you can Google it or YouTube search it and watch some of his matches if you are so interested. But uh, Shota always plays control, but he doesn't always play the same control, and his decks are usually different than most others. This deck finished with a good record at the Pro Tour. I want to say it was 7-2 and two in Constructed. Check my facts. 7-3. and three in Constructed against the best competition in the world. So this deck did go the distance and often the decks, like I said, are very unique. So let's look at this Grixis list. We have some, just the splattering of counter spells, not too heavy on any particular counter spell. We have a Negate, two Syncopates and two Sinister Sabotages. Then on the removal side, we've got two Cast Downs, all for Moment of Craving, so valuing that life gain and the moment of craving. There is a Golden Demise, a Beacon Bolt. There are two Vraska's Contempts. So there's another in the sideboard. There is another Cast Down in the sideboard. There's another Golden Demise in the sideboard. It's a very unique sideboard with a lot of one ofs and two ofs. And um, then the, the Beacon Bolt is another interesting one you don't see often out of Grixis. Two Rituals of Soot to accompany the Golden Demise. And Eldest Reborn, there is also an extra one of these in the sideboard. For card advantage, search for Azkanta and two Chemister's Insights, as well as two Disinformation Campaign. So just when you thought it was a regular control deck, there's a little bit of fake news going on. Three Thought Erasures with the fourth hanging out in the sideboard. And then we have Nicole Bolas, Doom Whisperer. And a whole bunch of lands. A whole bunch of rare lands, specifically 20 rare lands in the deck. I will get to a budget build before we're done. We're going to talk about the deck. We're going to talk about a budget build. We're going to talk about some sideboard guides uh, to play different matchups. Then we'll play a few games with the deck. That's the format. That's what I normally do. Over here in the sideboard, two duress. This is just a, a splattering of good cards so that things can be mixed up a lot. My sideboard guide was complicated for this one. Two Duress, two Disdainful Stroke, a Cast Down, a Thought Erasure, two Golden Demise, a, a Disinformation Campaign, three Thieves of Sanity, Ooh. one Vraska's Contempt, one Eldest Reborn, one Rawl, the Is It Viceroy. So a lot of a lot of quirks in the deck. It's very much a full 75, I can tell you that. You use your full 75 in every single matchup, and sideboarding is unique. Um, I often don't play sideboarded games here on the channel. We may rectify that a little bit in the future. I really enjoy Best of One. It's the way I like to play the game when, uh, when I'm recording, but we have had requests. We'll see how it goes. Over here, Let's go through the sideboard guide. This is what I would do. Shoda didn't call me up and say, CGB, this is how you sideboard with this deck. And I say, thank you, senpai. That, that is not what happened here at all. Um, these are my, what I've been trying so far. With this deck more than others, like much more than others, you have to sideboard against the player and the deck that you are up against and the card specific to that archetype. I'll try to bring that up if I can remember as I go through this. Also, if you don't care about the sideboard guides or talking too much about the deck, you can go down to the description and click to skip ahead to gameplay. 
remember to look out for that. All right, let's talk about the red matchup. So against red, I like to bring in all of the cheap removal. The cards that I think are too slow and clunky for the matchup are Disinformation Campaign and Chemister's Insight and the Eldest Reborn. So I get all the copies of those out of the deck. I really need to be affecting the board with removal right away. I do not bring in Thief of Sanity for any matchups that involve the card Shock, as the exchange is too bad. Way too bad. Also, Disdainful Stroke is definitely not good against red, and while a little bit of hand hate I find to be fine, you don't want too much because the red mage empties their hand very quickly. So, here still in the deck, I was trying to figure out if I should cut the Thought Erasures and play Campaign instead. Campaign usually comes down early enough to hit at least a card, and getting the card back, it can be a resource battle, but in the end I chose the Thought Erasures to try to smooth, our, smooth out our draws and have us more likely to Golden Demise on three to clean up the little wizards. Um, I'm not sure how right that is. Sometimes it feels great, sometimes you draw Thought Erasure. In the late game, your opponent's holding a mountain or nothing, and it feels very bad. So I'm not sure about that. I like keeping Sabotage and Negate because of burn spells. We don't have life gain for the deck outside of the Moments of Craving and Vraska's Contempt, the bonus copy which does come in here. So you have to counter Lightning Strikes, and you also have to watch out for and counter Experimental Frenzy. Now, that almost led me to trying a Disdainful Stroke, but not willing to go that far since it's dead against most of their cards. But um, having a Sabotage or Negate available for that is a very important part of the game. Also, Blink of an Eye, Blinking a Frenzy, so you can counter it later and make them replay it. Turns out it's a bit important, so Blink of an Eye stays in the deck. And there you go. I think that that basically sums up the red matchup. Make, try, make sure you keep hands with Moments of Craving and Cast Downs or Golden Demise early. Try not to keep a hand based on something like Negate, Sinister Sabotage into Ritual of Soot. You might be take too much creature damage before you cast the Ritual of Soot, then you can't counter their Experimental Frenzy anyway, and then you just lose. Rawl comes in because you need to get ahead on the board, and we don't have time for cards like Chemister's Insight, but Rawl can come down, kill something, and be life gain-ish because if they target Rawl with removal, well, then they didn't target your face. Doom Whisperer is the most likely person to close out these games because it's freaking huge. Next deck for the sideboard guide will be White. Um, this mostly applies to Selesnya as well, although Selesnya is a little bit of a different animal and you'd want disdainful strokes against them. But here, once again, we need the sweepers, we need the ritual soot. The cards that are too slow in this case, I find to be Sinister Sabotage because they play 18 one drops and some two drops, and it's just unlikely you can trade this up. There are no burn spells to counter. There are only a few big haymakers that you even need to interact with. I prefer Syncopate because I can play it on turn two to hit a Danto Vanguard or a Vanellish Martial History of Banalia, whereas Sinister Sabotage I found too slow. Over here, uh, also Disinformation Campaign, too slow. Once again, uh, Eldest uh, Chemister's Insight and Eldest Reborn also in the too slow camp, similar to the red matchup. And a lot of the sideboarding is exactly the same, with a big exception. They don't have shock. Therefore, I'm happy to bring in a Thief of Sanity. If you can start your game off with killing one of their creatures, like a Vanguard, or casting down, say, a Benelish Marshal, and then get a Thief of Sanity onto the battlefield, Hitting him, them with Thief of Sanity will get you a one drop pretty often. They usually run 18 to 20 one drop creatures. If they run 20, that's one in every three cards. So if you can hit cheap cards that you can cast while also casting your more expensive spells so you are double spelling every turn, that seems to be a good path against the white deck to gumming up the board and taking over. They don't have many ways to kill it. They do have some flyers, but sometimes Thief just Brick Wall's a healer's hawk for a few turns, and you're grateful for the service. The game usually ends, if it ends in your favor, in a another Doom Whisperer, usually a couple of them, or a flipped bolus running away with the game after you've swept the board multiple times. It is a tough matchup, I will say that. The white, the white decks are not easy at all. But at least you have Moment of Craving. So, Drakes. This is another real pain. 
Um, we don't have enough Exile to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Drake deck and Exile all of their threats. So we do need to focus on removal that can specifically, sp specifically get rid of the Phoenix and take down the Enigma Drake and take down the Crackling Drake, but we can't just dial in on that. I find best to turn this into a resource war. If the opponent can't get back their Arclight Phoenixes, things are much more difficult for them. So I use a lot of, I bring in all the hand hate. I bring in duress, I add the fourth thought erasure, I add the extra disinformation campaign, and I try to empty their hand of spells. Now, the first discard spell where they get to choose feels bad because they discard their Arclight Phoenix, but remember that so many of their spells, like Charticorce, Tormenting Voice, require discard anyway, that the Arclight Phoenix was going to get to that graveyard one way or another, and the lower we keep them on cards, the harder it will be for them to bring it back over and over. Hopefully you can catch it with Vraska's Contempt or Syncopate if they draw it off the top, although if they're smart they wouldn't even cast it against these shenanigans. And then the other drakes are where you have to focus some muscle. If you can kill those, it's, it's definitely reasonable to get out Bolas, Doom Whisperer, and block the Arclight Phoenixes. But getting rid of all the Enigma drakes and Crackling drakes as soon as possible is important. They're actually the most likely thing you want to take with your Thought Erasures. If you can time your Thought Erasures after their draw spells, so you're most likely to hit the Drakes, that's a good idea. Cast Downs and Vraska's Contempt also try to do the job, and the Beacon Bolt stays in for specifically that reason. You also will try to get into those spots where you blink of an eye their Crackling Drake or Enigma Drake to Thought Erasure it, or Disinformation Campaign it. So look for those opportunities. If the game ends in your favor, it will once again probably be the smashings and bashings of Doom Whisper. Because of... I, I don't know about cutting the Eldest Reborn. This is a card that might need to stay in in the matchup, especially in place of a Chemister's Insight, where it never feels like I have time to grind. Uh, and I'm already drawing cards off the campaign. I would totally understand using Eldest Reborn instead of Chemister's Insight. I've personally been in too many spots where they can sacrifice an Arclight Phoenix and get it back the next turn and I'm tapped out and that makes me sad. And that situation may have come up more than it should in my games. So that might be, that. that's a spot I'm not sure about just yet. Next up is versus Golgari. And this will be the last of our sideboarded games that we talk about or sideboard guides. This is, a, this is a total street fight of card advantage, um, hand warfare, and board warfare at all times. Um, everything is about trying to get ahead in cards. I like bringing in the Thief of Sanity, despite the presence of cards like Vivian Reed, um, despite the presence of cards like Varaska, Golgari Queen. I find that you can still sometimes thread your way through the rubble and get there with Thief of Sanity. Those cards I mentioned do cost four mana. So it's not ridiculous to get out your Thief of Sanity and use the card that's been sitting in the sideboard no nearly the whole time, Disdainful Stroke, to protect it. So there you go. Um, try to get out your Thief of Sanity. Try to hit their hand because you have your fourth Thought Erasure. The only, you don't have Duress. I did not bring Duress in for this because sometimes you Duress them and their hand is all Jade Light Ranger, Wild Growth Walker, Chupacabra and it's a little bit of a fail, but Duress is probably good enough in the matchup if their build is much heavier on Planeswalkers. So if they're playing eight, you know, seven or eight Planeswalkers, especially after board, then you want your Duress. You might be able to do without Ritual Soot at that point. Ritual Soot stays in the deck because at some point you have to clean up the Explorer creatures or they do beat you down into submission. Golden Demise doesn't hit all of them. Jade Light and Secret Squire can usually outgrow it, but Ritual Soot does. If the opponent isn't emphasizing that part of the game plan, these could certainly be duress. I'd like to take out my disinformation campaign. I've been running into too many Thrashing Brontodons and Veraska queens and this card when you play it on turn three does feel like a liability because you aren't keeping up on the board the doom whisper is similar tapping out for it on five mana feels very bad um, when you're in a desperate spot you're getting beaten down and your opponent plays chupacabra so both of these don't feel like their board presence is 
like what they do is sticky enough, like it matters enough, and you seem to fall behind when you cast them, as opposed to other cards that you can keep in the deck. When your opponent runs Doom Whisperer, you do need more cast downs. If they don't run Doom Whisperer, you may need to cut those back. Um, Carnage Tyrant's a big problem. So Eldest Reborn can only hit Carnage Tyrant if other creatures die, so Ritual Soot is interesting. But this Golgari matchup is ugly, and more than others, you really need to pay attention to the kind of deck your opponent is running, which type of Golgari, and how to sideboard against it. The way that it most likely ends profitably for you is that you take away the removal spells and you thread the needle with Thief of Sanity or Nicole Bolas the Ravenger, get enough damage in before they their fine finality carnage tyrant shenanigans completely take you over. So in an odd way, even though you're getting attacked by a lot of explore creatures and you have a ton of removal in your deck, you it feels like Grixis is the beat down. And speaking of that matchup, I didn't do a sideboard guard for Jeskai because this is also very much a similar match. But against Jeskai, you pay attention to what kind of a deck they are playing. Most likely it's something very similar to this for sideboard configuration. But I would cut out cast downs and ritual soots almost certainly against Jeskai to replace with duress and disinformation campaign. And that's probably a straight swap. Five super removal spells out of the deck, some hand, all the hand hate back in. And other than that, I don't think I have to say a bunch about the Jeskai matchup. You are, again, the beatdown. Make sure, you, like, the best road to victory is to take away ways that they have to remove Thief of Sanity, play Thief of Sanity, draw a bunch of cards with Thief of Sanity, enjoy your victory. All right, that's going to do it for my sideboard guides. I'm going to start up some games and, uh, oh, there is one more guide, very crucial to some of you out there who are going to tell me I love your deck, but I can't play it on Arena. I don't have all the rares. Here's the budget, Grixis. Now, the actual list is interesting. The actual list contains very few rares. Um, is Kanta and Ritual of Soot and Vraska's Contempt, I believe, are the rare cards from the list. Um, then there are some Mythics, Imbolus and Doom Whisperer. But the real rares are in the mana base for the uh, for the Grixis deck. 20 rare lands, and that's a little bit out of reach. If you aren't willing to put some rare wild cards into the mana base, it's very unlikely you'll win many games with the deck. If you straight replace them all with tap lands, you will never be able to keep up with aggressive decks in Arena, even budget aggressive decks in Arena. But what I did do is trimmed a number of the rare lands to run Evolving Wilds, and since the deck is primarily blue and black with only a tiny splash for red, I use Submerge Boneyard to also um, complement the mana base. So if you're not willing to at least pick up some Watery Graves and supplement those Drowned Catacombs you get the first few weeks of the free-to-play experience, then you really shouldn't be playing tricolor decks. But if you're willing to work on picking up some of these some of these lands, you can offset it a little with Evolving Wilds and Submerge Boneyard, and it won't always be a, a pure disaster. I trimmed on the Doom Whisper and Bolas, so these are the four mythics in the deck that you should be picking up to get the full Grixis experience. I added an Eldest Reborn instead for a Doom Whisper, and for a Bolas, I moved in, I think it was the fourth Thought Erasure from the sideboard over to the main deck. For Ritual of Soot, I trimmed one of those, being rare, and added a gold demi Golden Demise instead for a very similar effect. And I cut the one search for its Kanta because I don't think it's absolutely necessary to the deck, and I increased the amount of Disinformation Campaign. And this is the budget build, again, for all deck lists you can look in the video description. And now, finally, off to those games. Let's go see how the deck does. I'm really excited to play it for you, and I think it will be a lot of fun. You're gonna love it. Okay, here we go. We are in competitive play, best two out of three. We're in game one. We are on the play. Our hand has two tap lands, Syncopate, Negate, Beacon Bolt, and Ritual of Soot. We have our colors. This is the kind of hand I honestly hate. It could get run over very badly. However, it's so hard to mulligan it on the play. Um, being on the play, I guess a three or four card hand is interesting. This is also the kind of hand where you draw one basic land or one of the dual shock lands and it suddenly is a great hand. However, 
you really have to bank on drawing multiple lands. And if this, if if either one of these were a steam vents or a watery grave, I would find this keep very easy. But I can't do it. Um, I'm going to mulligan it, and I'm going to be sort of pleased with the result. I'm not. This is interesting. I think it's a little better. I'll definitely keep a land if it's on top with my scry. A Doom Whisperer, though, I think is too ambitious because we may never get there, and I already have one five drop. All right, the opponent has gone to six. Let's play our Watery Grave tapped so we can have all colors available next turn, although we don't have early red cards for the most part. I'll take this turn to play a tapped Steam Vent since I don't have another play aside from an unkicked blink of an eye, which isn't something I think you would get me to play on almost anything. Our opponent with a guild gate. So, three lands, no plays so far. We will need another land off the top. Nothing is really online yet. Our opponent goes for a Jade Light Ranger. Now, we can respond to the trigger for Explore with Moment of Craving to kill it. If we wait to play this card, the opponent's Explore trigger could grow the Jade Light Ranger to a 4-3 and Craving would no longer work. Turns out that would not have been a problem. Our opponent hit two land, but it's still important to respond to the trigger if you're going to use Moment of Craving. Land off the top. Now we have Chemister's Insight available. Our opponent plays a Midnight Reaper. This is a card that I certainly wish to exile, and I'm trying to think if there's any better removal for it. Especially with an Eldest Reborn ready to hit a Planeswalker if one resolves. I feel like I could Vraska's Contempt this, but because I'm at 22 life with a lot of room, I'm going to use this opportunity to play Chemister's Insight and just get more information, get more cards flowing. There's a Ritual of Soot. I think that passing the turn with a plan of Vraska's Contempt on the Reaper seems good. The opponent, if they play a Planeswalker, we can play an Eldest Reborn to take it out the following turn falling a little bit behind on value. I don't like playing Nicole Bolas here. The chances of a, a straight up chupacabra and then an attack for three are a bit too high for my taste. So we'll pass the turn. And uh, with the plan being to contempt this Reaper. All right, I'm not going to take the damage either and hold up a fake counter spell that isn't there. Whatever my opponent would play through it would be, uh, would resolve and they'd know I don't even have a counter spell. And I have the Eldest Reborn. So I want my opponent to feel good about playing a Vivian Reed or a Vraska Golgari Queen right now. A fine broker. That's a bit more annoying. But they get back the Jade Light Ranger. It's the only card in the graveyard at the moment. So, if that's what's going on, I don't have a means of getting rid of the Fine Broker anytime soon. I can use Eldest Reborn to kill it, and it is a good get back with Eldest Reborn to create my own Eldest Reborn loop. <laughs> Keeping the board nice and clear against Golgari. We are down on answers to Planeswalkers now, which is scary. Though I think if my opponent had one, they would have played it. A, a big Vraska there would have been terrifying. Same with a Carnage Tyrant, but you have to pick your poison against this deck. There's a million ways to lose. Choose one. All right. Find Broker and the Branch Walker returning to hand. So with our opponent having the option of playing Find Broker now, there aren't anything... There's nothing too good in the graveyard. We need to get something else good into the graveyard for chapter three of the Eldest Reborn. I'm gonna stop my upkeep for sure because I may need to do something crafty like Moment of Craving on upkeep so I have something good to get back. But it's a great time to play Nicole Bullis the Ravager. Our opponent, if they Chupacabra this now, we simply bring it back with the Eldest Reborn. And if they discard something juicy, we get that with the Eldest Reborn. Nah, not that juicy. <laughs> I give that a I give that the unjuicy. We also have Blink of an Eye, by the way, which I'll put a stop here. 
perhaps with the Eldest Reborn trigger on the stack, we can blink it back to our hand. Merfolk Branchy arrives. This one can't outgrow a moment of craving in response, and we have a ritual set. All right, there's a Chupa on top of the deck. One more land, and we could flip the bolus, though. It's interesting. That's a lot of cards for the Ritual of Soot. City's Blessing achieved with Arch of Arazka on the battlefield. I think I saved my moment of craving. The opponent's avoiding killing the Bolas. So right now we're getting back what? A Druid? That's not great. Maybe I don't save my moment of craving. Maybe I return this to my hand and get back a Jade Light Ranger. Seems good. Can also fill the graveyard for the next level and make sure that we have an option to flip our bowl as soon. Oh, I thought I was on my opponent's end step. Lost track of time there, talking in my monologue. All right, let's draw our card. Another land, okay. So now we can get Jade Light and flip Bolas. The opponent kept a Chupa, obviously thinking that it's going to take out the Ravager. So yeah, I believe flipping Bolas has to be the play here. So let's head to main. I'm not going to bounce the Eldest Reborn as planned. I'll get this Ranger. Thought Erasure is a good one. We will put down a Sulphur Falls. It forces our opponent to play Find Broker early, and there's not much to get back. So that's why I love the Thought Erasure here. And I'm confident I can go for a strike here with Bolas. And let's test the opponent for that Assassin's Trophy or Cast Down once and for all. With the Chupa on the way, it's it's now or never. And the looking around. Is at my disposal. Again, nothing much to grab. I think that ticking up and getting way ahead on cards is a good is the way to go. Here comes Chupa. I'm perfectly happy with that. It leaves the Fine Broker in our opponent's hand, which we can Thought Erase away, and then get back, potentially, with Nicole Bolas to get the Eldest Reborn. Which restarts the whole party. Okay, we drew a Ritual of Soot. So is that the line? Do we make our opponent discard Golgari Fine Broker? Recall it with Bolas, get back Eldest Reborn. Sounds pretty good. And we could replay the Eldest Reborn, but I think it's more important to play a Ritual of Soot, and then the opponent's only creature is the Chupacabra. So, all right. Give me a card. Oh wait, not yet. I've gotta do things in proper order. Hold up. We got a Thought Erasure first. Ooh, there's a Doom Whisperer as well. But I'm not as afraid of the Doom Whisperer. Should I be? Let's think. Well, if I take the Doom Whisperer... Our opponent still doesn't have great things to get with Find Broker. But isn't just getting the Eldest Reborn better? It feels like it is, but Doom Whisperer is so much stronger. I'll take the Doom Whisperer then. This on top of the library. This can be in the graveyard. I don't need to draw it. And we'll go with the Arisen. Give me this. Death means nothing to me. And here's our Ritual of Soot. Taking out those creatures. With Blink of an Eye available to save Nicole Bullis the Ravenger. And the opponent is not interested in playing the rest of it. Welcome to sideboarding. So, bit of a street fight. We tr we definitely need to leave the Rituals of Soot. We're certainly up against the Explorer version of the deck. 
and I usually run out of time doing these things, so I'm going to try to hurry. And they are the Doom Whisperer version, so Cast Down comes in. Moment of the Craving can, for the most part, take a hike. I don't like the disinformation campaigns. It feels like I fall too far behind on the board when I cast them, as I talked about in the deck deck. The, I think this is a version where I want the Eldest Reborns in my deck, not the Chemist Insight, trying to outcard them that way. And I like cutting my Doom Whispers because they're Chupacabra bait without much value. Whereas protecting a Thief of Sanity is a bit more reasonable than protecting a 5-mana Doom Whisperer. I talked about in the deck tech um, and the sideboard guide, I don't like casting Disinformation Campaign and Doom Whisperer against Golgari. And same can be said for Chemister's Insight. It feels like I just fall too far behind on the battlefield when that happens. And you can definitely lose games up to Golgari that way, as it's just this constant battlefield arms race that seems to never end. I like this hand. We have Steam Vents making Drown Catacomb and Sulphur Falls untapped. Counter Magic, a little bit of removal. It doesn't feel like too much bad should be able to happen to me unless our opponent has Llanowar Elves, which I don't see. And they do have a Druid of the Cowl. Well, you know what they say, Bolt the Bird. Is that the right play? When we have a Negate and a Syncopate? Actually, I think I'll wait. I think I can wait. We'll see what our opponent does with that bird. Midnight Reaper. Certainly a syncopatable card. We don't want to let our opponent get ahead on cards. And if our opponent has mana trouble here, we're going to untap and bolt the bird. Yes, indeed. Another one. I'll need a land off the top. Now it's my turn to... Oh! They're no longer interested in playing the game. <laughs> okay, we're in competitive constructed. We are in game one. And we are on the draw with a two lander that has a removal spell and a search for his Kanta. We don't know anything about our opponent. I like keeping the hand. There's definitely a good amount of risk that goes anytime you keep a two lander, especially with shock lands. But let's see where it goes. Let the party begin. Our opponent has opened on a mountain. They're using a Johnny's avatar. It looks like they want to play the Drake deck. And it uh, looks like the Drake deck is off and running. Tough matchup, the Drake deck. I've definitely seen that already. The sideboard plan that Shoda, that I can come up with for the Shoda deck, which is disrupt their hand and try to beat them down, pretty loose, or at least it's been so far for me. It's close to 50-50, and I would prefer something better than that in my sideboarded matchups, because in game one, we're definitely unfavored, which leads me to believe that the matchup is not favorable, and it wouldn't help to be mana screwed, so thank God for a land off the top. Maybe we can do it again. We also have very few ways to exile the Phoenix. If a Phoenix comes back here, we have a tough decision to make on whether or not to cast it down and make the opponent bring it back next turn. Defending your life total, though, is a very important part of the game, of these games. Your opponent will almost always have a Lava Coil for the Ravager, a Beacon Bolt for the Doom Whisperer. You have to hope that they stick at some point. And here it comes, the bird. And I am just, I'm going to cast it down right away. Uh, 
I need land, so I can't keep Thought Erasure. And a Syncopate off the top. Maybe I will get something I can at least counter and slow the opponent down. Yeah, that is a syncopatable card. Glad to do it. Land, please. Okay, library. Now this is very likely to get a Bolus Lava Coiled, but we have to get started on the battlefield. We're actually, we actually need to stay the aggressor in most of this game. If we don't end the opponent in the long game, they will make big drakes and a bunch of phoenixes that we probably can't find exile spells for, and they will win. So we have to start hitting them for damage at some point. The Electromancer is here. Radical idea, discarding a mountain. Lava Coil, killing the Bolas. If they have one more spell, it's Phoenix time. And they do. It's a shock to the face, so that they can bird me to the face. So we can bring back Bolas. Make them discard their last card. Ooh, library. So what is their count here? Nine? <laughs> All right. Well, they definitely can take out the Doom Whisperer. So, hmm. I'm going to take some amount of damage because the Beacon Bolt is going to crush whatever I play. I may as well play the Bolas and make them discard another card. At that point... We're still not quite in range of flipping the search for his Kanta. So I'm playing Doom Whisper on eight life and hoping to stabilize. I don't love it. I don't think it will work, but it's worth a try. Our opponent will radical idea first. Interesting. And now comes Beacon Voltage. Yes. So with Radical Idea in the graveyard, they have another redraw as well. Moment of craving to rebuild the life total a little bit. Hold off some Phoenix. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So... I think now is the time to get Doom Whisperer online. Like I said, we do have to get aggressive at some point. And making the opponent find another Beacon Bolt, I think, is a good idea. They usually play one or two in the lists that I've seen. All right, discards another Electromancer. And let's see, that's just one card off the top for our opponent, and that's where you want them. If we found something like Disinformation Campaign now and kept them to one card off the top most of the time, we'd be really good. So do I want to work on flipping his Kanta here? Do I use Doom Whisper to surveil? Where are we on, five? All right, let's go to... Ugh, it's tough. But I do think I'll surveil here. A few good draws could make a big difference. Cast down's good against a Drake, but all right, let's put a stop here and let's draw that. My turn. So with this on the stack, we have six cards. Let's go ahead and use Moment of Craving here on the Arclight Phoenix. Gain two life, kill it. That takes us to seven cards in Graveyard. Resolve or search for his Conda trigger. I'm going to keep this on top. I'm going to transform Search for his Kanta. I'm going to draw. And I'm going to use my Rituals Soot to get rid of the Electromancer. And I'm going to attack. And let's start the clock and see if we can steal this game. Opt off the top. Let's see if that can start a chain of spells to bring the phoenix out of the graveyard. So that's one spell. 
Crackling Drake. Okay. If there's a maximized velocity, I'm dead. But it doesn't appear to be so. Golden Demise. Not very useful. Let's play without tapping the Azkanta. Let's play the cast down on the Drake. Glad we kept it around. Let's send over the Doom Whisper so that one more hit will get there. And let's keep up an activation of Iskanta the Sunken Ruin. Tormenting Voice discarding a land. That's one spell. Radical Idea is two. Radical Idea discarding a Drake would not kill me, or a Phoenix would not kill me, but land into Shock would. Tormenting Voice discarding Shock? Is that a mistake? No, because they only have one Phoenix. I was also counting that they would have to find a second Phoenix, which they haven't. Arclight returning from the graveyard, but does it attack? I believe it has to block now, which we have a removal spell for, so... I won't show my opponent any more of my deck by activating his Kanta. Instead, I'll untap and Beacon Bolt. And on to game two. So against the Drake deck in game two, if they have Electromancer, keeping Ritual of Soot can be good because it kills Enigma Drake and Electromancer, and there are plenty of times that the board becomes that way. Contempt as an exile spell is obviously pretty important. I like getting Rawl into the deck just as a way to grind out cards, cast down to take out more Drakes. I don't like Disdainful Stroke. Duress, though, we go full hand hate mode and try to run them out of, similar to what we sort of stumbled into in game one, we just try to run them out of ways to get back their Phoenix and uh, end game. So Golden Demise out. Chemistry's Insight feels too slow to me, and it feels like I'm falling very behind when I play it. Same with the Aldous Reborn. So those are going to come out along with I believe I cut two more Moment of Cravings, typically. Blink of an Eye is good on the Phoenix because then they have to recast it. The other option is to pull the Rituals of Soot, but when they have Electromancer and the Enigma, I think it's fine to keep Ritual of Soot. I might miss the life gain from Moment of Craving, but I'm willing to try this build. On second thought, I'll go to one Ritual of Soot and two Moment of Cravings, just being on the draw. I want to have more answers to a turn to Electromancer. On the draw, two tap lands. I hate it. We do have to draw into some lands for these to enter untapped, and it's clumsy, but on the draw, I think you have to keep it. And our opponent's off to the races with a snap keep seven and an opt. It's more likely to be drawn. Black source or blue source? I think it's a blue source. Oh no, it was Black Sources. Think. I don't know why I said that. All right, first Phoenix is in the graveyard and punished. Punished, my friends. Ah, Max punished. Do not do as I do. Learn from my mistakes. It's one of those things that can have a ripple effect on the whole game. All right, but where to go from here? 
We could attack the hand with Thought Erasure. I think we can start on a disinformation campaign, though. Let's spread some fake news. Our opponent's going to get a Phoenix back, and we have a Contempt next turn. But let's, let's start the grind. Beacon Bolt to the yard. Jumpstart cards. I mean, they're good to discard. It does make our hand hate very awkward, but still the plan. Oh, I think that is basically saying I'm not getting my Phoenix out this turn, and that appears to be the case. Let's erase some thoughts, shall we? Then we can either play as Kanta or hold up Cast Down. Our opponent might have Negate. They also might have Syncopate. If I'm planning to play this untapped anyway, let's do it. There is Negate. Okay. Let's play the Ascanta. Get the grind on. Medical idea. Can our opponent do three spells this turn? That's one. And no, they do not. Perhaps a lot of negates in our opponent's hand. Let's keep lands and start playing a draw go with the game. We have some sabotage. We have Rawl, but I don't think... Uh, just based on the way it's going, I'm starting to suspect that our opponent may be playing more of a draw go game as well after sideboarding. Really enjoying their negate presence. See, they're up to six mana. There is Niv. Well, that is not something that I can counter. So Niv gets to resolve. We don't have enough spells for Ral to take out Niv, which means that Frasca's Contempt will have to do the job. That's a good reason, though, when our opponent sideboards into Niv to keep Eldest Reborn in the deck. And we haven't seen Electromancer yet this game, so it's possible those have been boarded out as well. So we'll keep that in mind for game three. Do I keep a Syncopate? I already have two counter spells. I'm going to Graveyard it. And do I play Rawl? Holding up the counter magic may not do much. I think that playing Rawl can make sense. Our opponent would have to find two birds. Search for the unknown. That's oh, I'd love a bolus, but I'd also love a land. Let's see, you're on three cards here. I'll take the bolus. I might regret it, though. Yep, the opponent's moving quickly. They probably already see their Phoenix kill your Rawl line. But making them have it's a good idea. Because if they don't, we pull pretty far ahead. Alright, they didn't discard a Phoenix yet. They still have a radical idea to potentially do it. They didn't do a tormenting voice. Okay, it's just one bird. Just one bird to fight the Rawl. That's pretty fortunate for us. And very much Come on. getting to untap here with Rawl is much in our favor. I can graveyard you. I have enough removal going. There's the land. Just want to peek. The weight is killing Doom me. Doom Whisper. There's Beacon Bolt to simply smash Doom Whisper here, but more threats over the time will help. We don't have to play it this turn. All right, let's drop a land. Let's play a Bolus. Force our opponent to start dealing with our cards. Another tormenting voice down. So they have an all spell hand. They're going to get pretty deep into the deck. We're going to want to save Moment of Craving for when the attack phase comes, since Arclight Phoenix could just come back. It would be a very bad play. Lava Coil takes Bolus out. But we're getting into a full-on card advantage street fight now. All right, we're in the attack step. Let's 
I guess get the information. I'm sure they'll attack Raul, but perhaps they would change their mind for who knows why. But here's a moment of craving. And our opponent has a Crackling Drake. That's scary. But I think what we'll do here is get to untap, play cast down. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's focus, seven. So I could go up to eight mana, so I could cast down and have both Sinister Sabotages open. I like that. The search for the unknown. That's real science. Mm, a little bit of a land glut. But what I can do now is cast down the Drake and have both Sabotage is open. Now that doesn't protect Rahl from Phoenix, but there's only one so far. And I do think my opponent has more drakes based on that Tormented Voice discard earlier, or more creatures. So I'm going to fight over creatures. I'd also probably fight over a Charter Course or Tormenting Voice here. Anything that keeps more Phoenix from coming out. So that's one spell. Let's keep a Duress. And there's an Enigma Drake. Rahl can tick down to kill it. Let's start with, well, I guess Disinformation Campaign also gets the last card. So let's definitely get the last card. Thought Erasure. All right, all the Beacon Bolt. Well, that's going to make it hard for Doom Whisperer to do Doom Whisperer things. Does that mean instead... I wonder if that means that we should not play the Doom Whisperer and search for his Kanta for a while instead, but it doesn't get better. It doesn't get better. And now I have too much hand hate, so keeping that duress is regretting. I'm regretting. Card off the top. The opponent could try to Radical Idea into a card draw spell and then Beacon Bolt. Uh, they discard another Arclight Phoenix. Let's do some Surveilling. What do we most need? We need more threats. Uh, more Doom Whispers would be fine. We are at 21 life. We have to be a little bit careful. But more threats. And uh, there's a Doom Whisperer right on cue. We want to make sure that we basically have threats coming at our opponent for the rest of the game, run them out of these beacon bolts, and then get a clock on them and try to close. Circling for the kill, that's the idea. More disinfo campaign. Right. Pass the turn with all this hand hate that I don't need. But our opponent does need to build up spells in their hand or go on a crazy drawing cards run to get Arclight out of the graveyard. So I expect them to hold spells at some point. It's really lucky to, you can't really cast Tormenting Voice without spells in your hand. And it's really lucky to go chart a course, opt radical ideas in perfect synchronicity. But they're going to go for it. They draw the radical idea, they draw a card. Now they decide whether or not, yep, bring back the phoenixes and use the beacon bolt. It's going to work out because they had two. Because they had two there, it was guaranteed. All right, we need to use Ascanta first because otherwise our surveil goes to the bottom, and I very much regret that choice. But now we need to put a bolus on top of our deck, something like that. Blink of an eye will kind of do. We can blink a phoenix and then get it discarded. I mean, they just come back. God, I wish I could have had that negate. So, some poor... The cards came in a poor order all of a sudden. I 
think I can keep something like this because then I can as Kanta or draw into the negate off the, the campaign. It will be useful later, but it's not useful right now. Murmuring Mystic goes down. What a mess. You're good. Oh, bruised my ego too. Alright, I probably save this, which means right now what we're doing is using his Kanta to pick up a negate. But we save this for the attack step at least, right? Well, then they can replay it right away. If I hit him with it now, let's see. Three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So let's see, we go like this. And then do I still have enough mana? Yeah, I still have enough mana to his Kanta if I wish. But it gets rid of a Phoenix for a, a turn. They can get it back if they chain off perfectly. And pass. It's awkward and sad, but we don't have enough exile in the deck to fight the Phoenix battle quite the way that you'd want to. And if the opponent holds their card, we're in good spots because of our campaigns. And let's keep finding spells to remove things. There you go. That's our that's our card. A few of our cards here. Hmm. So Contempt can deal with a Drake. Does that mean I want to hold it for one and use Craving and see if the opponent can chain off their spells? Let's open with a Campaign and then we can use Craving and still have his Kanta available. Let's see if this gets our opponent to do anything with their one card. And try to keep them on one card a turn. Shouldn't be hard between Duress, Thought Erasure, and two campaigns. Disdainful Stroke down. Excellent. Land for turn. This moment of Crave now. Well, if the opponent draws Shock, I guess... Who cares? Yeah, let's Crave in the attack step in case they do somehow chain enough spells together to go off and get their other Phoenix back. But this is a tense game. All right, we've moved into the attack step now, so I'll fire away the craving. So, any use for that card? Not yet. Let's try and as Kanta Sunken Ruin, we see cast down, cast down, blink, contempt. I'll keep contempts. Thank you. All right. Thought Erasure, get back our campaigns. That's my idea. And it is a land, which will be radical idea, but we still have to go after it. Because then if the opponent responds with radical idea, they lose the card anyway. And perhaps that's what they're thinking right now, is, well, what do I do then? They don't want to spend the Radical idea, I don't think. I think they want to keep saving it. If they get enough Jumpstart cards in their graveyard, like they did earlier to kill Rawl, then they can play them all in one turn. And that's better than keeping them in the hand against this deck. And we'll hold the other campaign, but I'll play my untapped lands. You never know when you might need to negate and as Kanta, or as Kanta and cast down. 20 cards in the deck. Still a Doom Whisperer in here. There is a card I'm willing to negate, as it can start up the party for our opponent if they hit enough cards in a row. So let's look. Doom Whisperer lurking down there. So there's also plenty of Bolas along the way. I think I still is Kanta, but it's getting interesting. All right, so let's put on full control. If you put on full control and hit end search, you can order your cards. So I'm gonna move Bolas closer to the top so that we can draw back into Bolas sooner. 
And there is our beacon bolt. Since I don't have another surveil card yet, I do feel like holding the campaign is wise. We're almost out of surveil cards in the deck, in fact. Let's look around. Have we spent all the thought erasures? No, in fact, only two. So there are more thought erasures to come. Then in that case, finding one won't be hard. They're right here. So we can go ahead and play this to draw a card. It just might be a bolus so we can start applying pressure. And instead it's a syncopate, which I'm not upset about. Electromancer. There's probably multiple ways to kill that Electromancer that I don't need to worry about countering it. And Beacon Bolt is fine for that as well. All right, there's the Thought Erasures. There's the Bolus. We'll put on full control mode. We'll select you. But let's put Bolus closer to the top, please. Say done. Those little things can matter. Let's go to my turn. Another land off the top. Let's have a look. Doom Whisperer is hanging out right here. So we can surveil and bin this and then play both campaigns to get Doom Whisperer into our hand. But that's a bit rushed, I'd say. Let's at least Beacon Bolt away Electromancer. We're not going to use his Kanta, because if we do, we'll bottom our Doom Whisperer again. And it's still a ways to other things, so we will go ahead and play this Thought Erasure. Bin this. Return these. And I can't cast the Doom Whisperer this turn. Do I really want anything under the Doom Whisperer? I don't want the dress. So we'll go ahead and play this and just get a card closer to the Doom Whisperer, then pass the turn leaving up Frasca's Contempt if our opponent manages to somehow chain enough spells to bring back their Arclight Phoenix pair. Crackling Drake. We can make our opponent, we can syncopate it so our opponent doesn't get the card. I like that. Go. Do I want to campaign? The blink of an eye is closest I get to a negate anymore. The duress I don't really want, so my plan is to activate his content anyway. I may as well do it, but I don't need to show my opponent the blink of an eye, so I'll hold on to the campaign. It's interesting knowing the order of your draws can change a lot in the game. Our opponent plays out their land. Okay, let's hit the deck, grab the blink. I don't think it matters what order those cards go in. I'm not very interested in them. Cast down off the top. Slam. I could draw another cast down. There's also a Ravager right there. Could draw it next turn. That's pretty good. I still have duress to pressure the hand if my opponent slow rolls a card. Bolus can get back Niv. Uh, that's... No, wait, Niv got exiled by Vraska's Contempt. It does look like it's going to be slow roll a card time. So the draw, let's fire the dress. Might be just be a land that is going to get radical ideaed, but let's find out. And we get a lava coil, perfect. I was worried about a disdainful stroke, that's why we did not count on Bolus to discard the card, but Bolus would have worked out. However, here we are. Um, let's get a Crackling Drake, I would say. Mm. 
No one can stand in my way. I guess the Murmuring Mystic is also really good. We do have a ton of spells and making a lot of birds. Like, what does this deck do against that? Whereas drawing a Lava Coil, it could still take out the Drake, but they've used three Lava Coils. This is a one-turn clock. Let's not... The dead shall let's, serve me. Let's, let's grab the Drake. Oh my. Oh my. Niv off the top. Do I have a clean way without giving my opponent a card? I do not. We have a lot of ways to deal with Niv. 10 damage? Yep. Well, 10 damage Niv. That's the clean way. Unfortunately, Bolas had to die for Niv, but it doesn't give our opponent another card, and this one is over. It, and since that was such an epic match, it's probably the only full match I'll get to show you. So I'd like to thank you for watching the video. I, the Drake's match is a difficult match. It's a complicated match, so hopefully you enjoyed it. And I appreciate, of course, all of you taking the time to watch the show. I really like it when people post at the end of epic games and matches that they stayed till the end, so I know people actually stuck around to see it. Thanks so much for watching. As always, my friends, I will see you in the next video.